Hello, I'm Keith Pierce. Welcome to Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those who are working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. In this episode, we look at a town that makes a claim capitalizing on the natural landscape. Your expert tip comes from a person who might help bring big money into your town. Plus, we identify two other experts. We close with three questions and a book giveaway, so be sure to stay to the end. First, on a cold winter day, our executive producer, Andrea Brunet, visited Hayside for your example of awesome story. The town's plans take us to a natural wonder that Virginia shares with neighboring Kentucky, a park with almost unbelievable vistas. With mountains and rivers flanking their town, the people of Haysai had no question that geography would be their claim to fame. The tiny town is just a 15-minute drive from the breaks. With its five-mile gorge, the 4,600-acre park is sometimes called the Grand Canyon of the South. Great fishing rivers run through Haysai. Nearby are Whitewater Rapids and, for recreation, the Flanagan Reservoir. Locomotive tunnels attract photographers and railroad buffs. The Crooked Road Music Trail and the Transamerica Bike Trail run through town. But less than 10 years ago, the people of Hayside knew their town wasn't ready for visitors. Many downtown storefronts were sad-looking and sidewalks were falling apart. In addition to the many problems that the town of Hayside was facing, including the sidewalks, we didn't even have any marketing materials. The mayor of Hayside, Larry Yates, um, called a meeting where 80 plus interested people came together. And they were so excited about the ideas that we came and we put together that we wanted to make the town more attractive to tourists. What followed was action. At first, the group calling itself the Hayside Partners met weekly, identifying problems, applying for grants, and working with a marketing company. Now, seven years later, downtown has a consistent theme and the sidewalks have been rebuilt. What's more, the town has developed a revolving fund so that businesses can get loans of up to $50,000. One of those grants helped a longtime business owner convert a furniture and hardware store to become a place where new enterprises can be supported and grow. I generally do not solicit people, small businesses. I let them come to me because I feel as though if they come to me that they're, they're really interested in making their business grow and staying here. So from that standpoint, it's been a success. The Hayside Partners saw the fruits of their work in grants from the State Housing Department and the Appalachian Regional Commission. A river walk is part of the master plan. We knew with coal dying in our area and region that we had to do something, and the Hayside Partners were a wonderful, wonderful organization in helping accomplish that. What's next? Maybe a hostel to lodge those bikers on the Trans Am Trail. Whatever new goal the town sets for itself, the mayor knows he'll have citizen power behind him. You, you can't hold people back. You want them to grow. As you know, we're following the town of Parisburg and Mayor Robert Dickerson for a year. An unusual project involves the new river. Does it water down the town's economic development efforts? You decide. They say one person's trash is another person's treasure. But what if that trash was refuge washed up from the new river? Could it be transformed into art? And would that art entice residents and tourists to visit the town? Once the word got out in the surrounding area, the people would come and want to see what kind of sculpture you could get from trash. The project is a partnership between Renew the New, the Giles Art Council, and the town of Parisburg, with the help of funding from the Virginia Commission of the Arts. The idea for making art out of trash may have seemed crazy to some, but Diane Dinger, hired to bring in grant dollars, saw the educational value in connecting Parisburg's art assets to its river. People are given a self-guided map, tells you something about the artist, something about the message of the sculpture, and something about the materials that were used. Plaques with educational messages will be placed on each sculpture. So that people will have some understanding about the amount of trash that's been collected in the river, um, how it affects um, the river's well-being and its use, and then some of the future goals of Renew the New um, in terms of conservation. Art critics may be quick to trash this idea, but you never know what the river can wash up. We'll check back with Mayor Dickerson and his team in the coming months to see if Parisburg 
has cleaned up in more ways than one. Now for your expert tip. Belinda Sheridan calls the Procurement Technical Assistance Center one of the best kept secrets around. The center is known through word of mouth only. But with this center's help, entrepreneurs in your town can learn how to land one of the biggest customers of all, the federal government. And we sit down, hold their hand through the entire process. We first of all tell them where their market may lie. Then we help them to get registered and go through all the red tape. And then once a uh, particular opportunity is found for them, then we can help them decide, make the bid or no bid decision on that, work them through their bidding and proposal phase, through contract administration, should they uh, win it, and then through until they get final payment. You can read a transcript of her complete interview on the Save Our Towns website, including how to set up a meeting. Here are two other experts you may want to connect with, one working on food quality, the other on better drinking water. Nikki Diadamo Damery heads the Appalachian Food Shed Project, which supports community food projects in western North Carolina, southwest Virginia, and West Virginia. Food shed is a term covering where food is produced and where it's consumed, including farms, distributors, and restaurants. Partners are West Virginia University and North Carolina State University, as well as extension services. You can contact her to connect with innovative projects across the region. Kevin Sperlin works with the Virginia Household Water Quality Program serving rural Grayson County residents who rely on private water supply systems. The program provides confidential water testing and holds county-based drinking water clinics to educate users. Sperlin helps residents identify and correct private water system challenges such as excess fluoride, total dissolved solids, hardness, and acidity related to geology. For more information, go to the Save Our Towns website. You'll find Diadamo Damery under the VT Projects tab and Sperlin under the Extension tab. Wrapping up, as always, we close with three questions. The mayor of Haysai had the advantage of a colorful backdrop, a mural that was part of the Downtown Improvement Project. My name's Larry D. Yates. I'm the mayor of the town of Haysai, Virginia. Uh, scenic. A downturn in the, energy, in the global energy market and then um, a transition from uh, you know, a mineral extraction industry to a more diversified economy. The Haysaw is a very welcoming town that uh, we're open to uh, newcomers, we're open to uh, new ideas. We welcome uh, outsiders to come in and enjoy our town, uh, get acquainted with us, and uh, hope that they'll be willing to start a, a business here or start a life here. For more resources and contact information for the experts mentioned, go to the Save Our Towns website. You can also share your stories there. And the first mayor or town manager to send me your thoughts on this episode will receive a signed copy of the new book by Andrew Davis called Town Inc. You can use the Save Our Towns email, saveourtowns at vt.edu. In the book, Davis talks about how towns can be successful by staking a claim. This is episode seven of season two. Be sure to join us next time. Thanks for watching.